Good evening from Kiev, Ukraine. This is Josh Friedman on a bit of an impromptu live stream. Didn't announce this and I've been a bit AWOL lately. My apologies for that. But nonetheless, whether we have much of an audience or an audience at all or not, I'm gonna stream for a little while here on a beautiful Sunday evening in the heart of the Ukrainian capital. What you are looking at is the famous Maidan. Maidan Nezalezhnosti. It's a mouthful, but it means Independence Square, and that's fitting because it was Independence Day yesterday in Ukraine, and there were some festivities taking place right here, particularly along Prashatik. This is the main drag that leads through the heart of Ukraine and excuse me, the heart of Kiev, which is in the heart of Ukraine, and splits the Maidan. There's this side and then there's this side, and you've probably seen it on television or on YouTube clips from Euromaidan when that was taking place. <laughs> almost get run over by a military vehicle. Uh, for whoever's tuned in, could you please tell me if you can hear me all right? I know there's a lot of background noise, but I've got my earphones in, so I'm hoping that mitigates that problem. But I can also walk away from the drum set. That's it's interesting that there's a military or military looking vehicle driving by because that was what was missing yesterday. Right, this building right behind me is, or it was the trade union building that burned and had snipers on the roof. Back. Oh, thank you for uh, Reg saying, here you find. Thank you for that. Yeah, the, a lot of famous, or uh, I guess I'd say famous sites, pretty, pretty noticeable sites here at the Maidan, especially if you followed the Euro Maidan protests and unrest, revolution, whatever you want to call it, from more than five years back already. Yeah, this, this was the trade union building and uh, kind of the famous Ukraina hotel is in the background. It's, it's a very nice place to be at this time of day and this time of year. On Sundays, they open up for Shattuck to pedestrian traffic. And it was like that for much of yesterday as well because it was Independence Day. And this, this whole weekend is a holiday weekend here in Kiev. I'll talk a little bit about Ukrainian independence and Independence Day. I'll talk a little bit about how I spelled Kiev and why I spelled Kiev that way. And if anyone's got any questions or comments throughout this impromptu live stream, I'll do my best to address them. And maybe I guess I'll start out addressing where I've been lately. So I, I haven't exactly <laughs> Uh, followed course this summer. I finished up a pretty intense month or two of reporting, which concluded with me arriving back in Odessa, which was already, what, a, a mo month and a half ago, something like that. And a little more than a month ago, there were parliamentary elections here in Ukraine, which I covered from Odessa, and I never really, I never really finished my coverage of that. I guess uh, what I left out is that from my election night broadcast, when the results were not entirely clear, the results were clear that the new president, Vladimir Zelensky, and his new party, Servant of the People, won. And what was unclear on election night was would they win an outright majority? And indeed they did. So now Zelensky has a very strong mandate, I would say. He's got majority to go along with being the president who won resoundingly over an incumbent who was Petro Poroshenko. That was back in April and I was here for that as well. I covered the Ukrainian presidential election this year here from Kiev. So the, the update on, on that regard is that Zelensky, which I guess it isn't so, it's not so much news now, but I, I haven't 
like I said, I never really finished up my election night coverage. So Zelensky delivered a, a huge, whoever that is waving, <laughs> Zelensky won a huge victory in the parliamentary election and a lot of people, a lot of commentators responded by saying, okay, well now Ukraine's been gifted another chance at enacting major reforms. And there's been a, there was a big letdown or a lot of people felt let down in the aftermath of Euromaidan. A lot of people thought that more should have changed and that was reflected in the voting both back in April when Poroshenko was ousted and Zelensky basically won on a protest vote in the voting last month when Zelensky carried that momentum forward and parlayed it into a parliamentary majority. So will major, major reforms now take place in Ukraine? We shall see. Um, as far as what, where I've been, so I, I did spend about a month in Odessa that was interrupted. You might have seen I returned to Bulgaria for about a week because of a funeral. And if you did not see the video I did when I was walking around Sofia recollecting my time spent with and the lessons I learned from Alex Alexiev, the man who brought me out to Bulgaria and out to Eastern Europe. Go ahead and take a look at that video. It's the most recent one on the channel. Uh, so yeah, I was back in Bulgaria for about a week. I also, uh, last weekend, or uh, last week, I ventured over to Vienna for an interesting conference that I take part in on a yearly basis now. It's called the Hoyereka Conference. I made a little video about the original one back two years ago. The conference has definitely grown since then, and maybe if you're interested, I'll, I'll provide some coverage of that in the future as I expect to be returning to that. But I am, I am spending most of my summer in Ukraine. I'm now bouncing around. A couple hours from now, I have a train from Kiev to Lviv, which is a city in the west, city in Ukraine. People there actually speak Ukrainian, whereas in places like Odessa, the primary language spoken is Russian, and in Kiev it's split, although I hear a lot more Russian than Ukrainian spoken in Kiev. I couldn't give you any exact figures as to how, like, what, what percentage of people here are speaking Russian versus Ukrainian, but I would say as a little anecdote, it, it was a little odd yesterday, walking around town, seeing all these uh, Ukrainian Independence Day celebrations, and at the same time hearing lots and lots of people speaking in Russian. But that's very reflective of Ukraine today. So even the president, Zelensky, is primarily a Russian speaker, and I know that appealed to many voters. Uh, the sentiments in Lviv, which are very pro-Ukrainian language, pro-Ukrainian nationality and identity, are not necessarily reflective of the sentiments nationwide. Now, granted, there's, there's a lot more that goes into electing uh, a president than merely the, the language issue, but I was going to say, it was, it was a bit strange hearing lots of people walking around speaking in Russian while celebrating Ukrainian Independence Day. Some people take issue with that, uh, many others do not. I, I ask people about this all the time and I, I love hearing different perspectives on it. I, I, I very, just from regular folk, I, I very, very commonly hear people saying something like, I am Ukrainian, I identify as Ukrainian, Ukraine is my country, I'm not Russian, I don't, I don't want to live in Russia, but I want to speak Russian, and I want to, I, I'll say I, I can speak Ukrainian perfectly fine, but I prefer to speak in Russian, I want to speak in Russian. And that's, that's a very common sentiment across much of the country, although not in the West, but certainly 
in the south, certainly in the east and northeast, and at least in my opinion, to a very large extent in Kiev, although it's definitely mixed. I, I hear far more Ukrainian spoken here than in, say, Odessa. What I was, I, did I mention that the, the tanks were not on this street yesterday? I was, I was about to, or maybe I did it and I forgot. But as I come to the end of the, the Sunday, eve, or Sunday pedestrian area here on Reshatik, so it's tradition, kind of like on uh, uh, Victory Day in Russia, it's tradition here on Independence Day. By the way, this is Ukraine's 28th Independence Day, 28th year of independence from the Soviet Union. And it's tradition here on Independence Day for there to be a military parade, like a mini version of what you would see on Victory Day in Moscow. And there was indeed a parade yesterday, and I filmed a few clips of it. But the tanks were not out on the streets. Z Zelensky, from what I heard, called off the uh, military, kept the military vehicles out and the military equipment out of the parade, which is a move that I think was reported that it was going to save, I forget how much money, some, I don't know, some figure like $12 million, I might be getting that wrong, but it, from what I heard it, it was intended to to save money and then give that money directly back to the troops and honestly I don't know uh, how well that was received probably probably received fairly well I haven't been asking people if they're disappointed by there not being a full-on military parade yesterday but yeah that was something very noticeable Slightly disappointing for me, I must must admit. I was kind of, it was a coincidence that I ended up in Kiev on uh, Independence Day. I'd been in Ukraine before on Independence Day. Actually, I was in Odessa on 25th Independence Day, but I've never seen the military parade here. Well, I guess I saw some some version of it yesterday. Uh, but yeah, that, that addresses to some extent uh, where I've been, what I've been up to, although on, on a personal note, um, I would say that I'm finding it a bit of a challenge right now. And feel free, whoever's watching, to leave any comments and questions, I'll, I'll address them throughout. I don't, I don't really have any... Uh, thanks for sharing. Th thanks for watching and thanks for commenting, especially since I didn't even announce this and I've been, my channel's been rather dormant lately, which I guess I'll talk about that right now. So for the first half of this year, or rather the first seven, I guess seven and a half months of this year, I, I was going pretty much all out on reporting and on the ground reporting and travel and nomadic journalism as I call it. And especially I was very pleased with how my Africa trip turned out, which I still haven't even finished releasing the footage of. And I was pleased with how my Bilderberg coverage went and how the three, I covered the three elections shortly thereafter. But I, I would say that the Africa travels and Bilderberg being in Switzerland and other travels, they, they've been taxing. I'm, I'm not, I'm definitely not worn out. I don't think I'm burned out either, but uh, I've definitely had some, some finances get a bit burned out from the extent of the traveling I've done this year and the pace at which I've been traveling and some of the places I've been to, such as Montreux, Switzerland, not very cheap at all. So yeah, I've got uh, a situation where I've got a bit of, I've got some restructuring to do at the moment, and I'm, I am doing that. I'm, I'm trying to find some new ways to fund 
my travels and this channel and my media operation in general. I'm, I've got a few different projects that I'm working on and I've been placing a lot more focus lately on Tom Jode says, hi Josh, hi Brent. <laughs> I've been placing a lot more focus lately on work that gets me paid as a po uh, question. I also really appreciate the Bilderberg 2019 coverage since hardly anyone in the US is covering it. Well, uh, thank you and, and you're welcome for the coverage. I think I addressed it in, in the vlog I, I published already and I might, I still have more Bilderberg footage I haven't released. I've, I'm gonna try to compile that and release it as well. Some, maybe some interesting, um, not so much behind the scenes footage, but some, I've, I've got a lot of, I've got a lot more footage that I haven't released from Bilderberg and I, I have been following up. I'm not, haven't addressed this, but I'm, I'm trying to do my research. I'm trying to develop sources within Bilderberg and try to do my best to expand my coverage of build a rug and make it more impactful in the future. What I was about to say briefly is that it was very difficult for most people to cover Bilderberg or, or get to Bilderberg this year because, as you may be aware, the, the group announced the date and location of the meeting 48 hours before it started. Now, I, I basically was I put together a strategy in order to get me there and it succeeded, so I managed to get there, but most people who are coming from the US, good luck on 48 hours notice just showing up or flying into Geneva, Switzerland or somewhere else in the area and then and then just showing up. It's, it's not so easy. It's very expensive, especially if it's in a place like Switzerland. Uh, but yeah, I'll be, there's definitely gonna be more Bilderberg coverage coming from me in the future. Like I said, I'm trying to develop some sources, cultivate some, did I miss anything? Leads and information. I was, I was talking to start this off a bit about where I've been lately. I was Independence Day here in Ukraine yesterday, talking a little bit about, actually, Tom Jode, you might be interested. I was talking a little bit about the use of the Russian language here in Ukraine, which, all right, now, now let's get into how I have spelled Kiev. So this, this is something that I guess the time has come. I've held out for a long time on even addressing the matter, which I guess to many people would just be a matter of semantics, but to some people here, it's serious business. The matter of whether Kiev is I'm looking because they used to have a Kiev sign right over here on the lawn somewhere. I guess it's gone. But the, the question is whether Kiev is spelled K I E V as it's, I want to say more traditionally been spelled, but I, I can't even say that with certainty. I guess how it's been more commonly spelled in the media or major media for years or whether it's spelled K-Y-I-V. And this basically gets down to yet another level of the conflict between Russia and Ukraine, between Moscow and Kiev. The, the Ukrainian government officially transliterates Kiev from Ukrainian to be spelled K-Y-I-V. And I think since just about after independence, something like that, uh, the, the official spelling has been K-Y-I-V and it's been recognized as such in diplomatic circles. But the, for lack of a better term, Russian spelling of Kiev has been what's commonly used in major media and I've, Pretty much, yeah, I've, I've always been using the spelling K-I-E-V. But I looked a little more into this and my impression is that the, the tides are turning and there's gonna be a, I think there's gonna be a, 
a switch over in large part to the Ukrainian, the official Ukrainian spelling of Kiev in English. And I guess I bring it up now because just recently, earlier this month, AP, which has a very, very commonly used style book in journalism. In fact, in journalism school, I was taught to follow AP style in all my writing, not necessarily that I believe that should be the case, but it just goes to show the, the prevalence of, of this AP style book. And uh, the AP announced a week or two ago, earlier this month, that they have changed their spelling of Kiev to K-Y-I-V. And I'm just under the impression that there's uh, already, it's in diplomatic circles spelled K-Y-I-V. And uh, I'm, I'm under the impression that there's gonna be a shift in media. For instance, the, 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 the main uh, English language publication here in Ukraine, it's called the Kiev Post, pretty prominent English language publication in the region. And they, in, in their name, it's spelled K-Y-I-V. So it's my impression that major media over the years are, are gonna switch over from K-I-E-V. How do you, how do Ukrainians pronounce Kiev? <laughs> I mean, this is, this is a little tricky. I, can, I can't mimic pronunciation exactly. Uh, the, the difference, I think, would be so subtle. If there even is one between a, a Russian pronunciation and, and a Ukrainian pronunciation, it's, it's not so subtle with, with other cities. For instance, the one I'm heading to tonight, Lviv, Lviv is how you say it in Ukrainian, but in Russian it's Lvov. Likewise with Odessa, it's, it's Odessa in Ukrainian, but Odessa in Russian. In, and I, I guess that, that raises another question. I'm not, I don't want to get too much into semantics, but in Ukrainian, Odessa is spelled with one S, O-D-E-S. A. And in Russian, and I shouldn't say in Ukrainian, the, the, in the transliteration of the Ukrainian spelling, it's one S. And in the transliteration of the Russian spelling, it's two S's. So, so now do I switch over to spelling Odessa with one S? I, I guess I might have just opened a can of worms. I, I don't know if I want to go there. And I don't know who, if anyone is, is truly interested in this, but it matters. It matters the people here, and not that a war is being fought over the spelling of Kiev, but a war rages on in the east of this country, and it very much pits Russian interests against Ukrainian interests. So there's, and speaking of which, I don't know if you can even see it. Here's here's some of the images from Euromaidan. Got a lot of pretty iconic images out here on the Maidan now. You can see how packed the square was with tents and protesters back five plus years ago. Uh, any questions, any comments? We're, we're coming on about 25 minutes. I think I'm gonna go probably around, keep this to about around 30 minutes. I'm sorry that I have not been uploading as much recently. I guess, come to think of it, there are a couple other things that I, I probably should address. I posted back on the community tab several weeks ago that YouTube deleted another one of my videos. I don't know if I need to do another video saying YouTube <laughs> deleted one of my videos, but I've now had two videos deleted by YouTube in recent months and weeks. They're both from the same day, the same event. This uh, far right march that I covered in Dortmund, Germany a while back. I would, I would say it's pretty concerning. I don't, I don't know 
to what extent I can even be confident that this entire channel will remain up on YouTube. I, I don't think, as I was addressing this back in Istanbul, I, I don't think I'm a prime target at the moment, but it just doesn't seem like the kind of reporting I do is welcome on YouTube. But for now, uh, I'm not going to worry about um, what the, the fate of this channel is. Although I do, as I was saying in Istanbul, I do need to get most of the videos on this channel uploaded, probably to BitChute somewhere as a backup. Now they're going up on BitChute automatically, but only the new videos. I got to address the old videos. Uh, if you would like for me to continue with the Sunday live stream format, it's usually not the walk and talk format. It's, it's usually me sitting around camped and talking about geopolitics and some matters I'm more well versed and researched on. If you'd like for me to continue with that format, whether you're watching live or not, please, please leave a comment. It's it's a routine that I was getting into, but a routine that I quickly fell out of. So maybe I'll get back into that routine and maybe that's going to allow me to overcome this problem of inconsistency of not uh, question what I miss. Okay, so, so actually I'm close to wrapping this up right now, but here I am. It's, the sun's already practically down. Here I am at the Maidan in Kiev, Ukraine. I started this off by saying that yesterday was Independence Day here in Ukraine. I've been talking a little bit about some different elements to Ukrainian independence and some cultural conflict that remains between Ukraine and Russia. And I also updated that for those of you who are interested but haven't been following, Volodymyr Zelensky, the new president of Ukraine, did indeed succeed in winning a parliamentary majority, which was actually, it was actually a surprise. He, he outperformed expectations, not only in the, the presidential election back in April, the live stream is great and I'll definitely watch them when I'm able. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in and I'll, I'll try my best to, to keep up with this. Yeah, so Zelensky, outperformed expectations in April. I think he got more than 73% of the vote, something like that. And then he outperformed expectations last month in the parliamentary election with his new servant of the People Party winning an outright majority. So the, the speculation that I was discussing on election night of their need, love your work, been missing you. Well, thank you very much. And sorry, I haven't been uploading so frequently. I guess also what, what I was mentioning before is that it's, it's been a bit of a challenge lately for me to maintain the YouTube channel. I was going all out for much of this year on travel and reporting, particularly on the ground reporting and reporting at major events and elections in Bilderberg. And I'm going through some restructuring right now, trying to find ways to make my travels and reporting more financially sustainable and viable and maybe even profitable and yeah i've been more focused lately on on work that gets me paid than work that is my passion such as making these videos for you and having these conversations which i really do enjoy but it's i can't do it all and some of the time i i need to focus more on my actual journalistic work and whatever work I do that that does indeed pay the bills and keep me flying from place to place and reporting at events any other questions any other comments we're coming right upon 30 minutes I'd like to say thank you very much to everyone who's tuned in I've been AWOL lately uh, you can show behind the screens of your work yes actually I'm I'm working on that and uh, I was, I was going to release a bunch of unreleased footage from Bilderberg, and I, I, I started on that, and I haven't finished that project. So I'm going to try to finish that project. And if, if you're indeed interested in seeing more 
footage that I have from this year's Bilderberg, please leave a comment because that will inspire me or maybe give me a kick in the butt to actually get it done and get it published. And I guess for, for the same commenter, I, I've, I've also been, you don't see this on YouTube, but I'm, I'm trying to cultivate sources within Bilderberg, develop some leads and try to expand my reporting on the conference in the future. It's definitely something that's of interest to me. And in fact, I forgot to mention, I, I was hoping to address this well in Bulgaria, but I never ended up doing the stream. The focal point of my Bilderberg coverage back in 2016 in Dresden, Germany. Uh, that's what I meant showing that here. Yeah, all right, well, thanks for the kick in the butt and I'll try to get more Bilderberg stuff out. Um, the focal point of my coverage back in 2016 was Kristalina Georgieva, who most people have never heard of back then. Have a good evening. Yes, I'd love to go Thank you, yeah, have a ha good evening to you as well. Um, yeah, the focal point of my Bilderberg coverage back in 2016 was Kristalina Georgieva, who back then was a European commissioner. And back then there was speculation, which turned out to be true, that she was gonna try to become UN Secretary General. She did not succeed in getting elected UN Secretary General, but she has now received the nomination from the EU, which makes her the prime candidate to become the next head of the International Monetary Fund, the IMF. And I think that's noteworthy. And that goes along with the, the recent news that three of the four mentioned Russian, uh, that three of the four top EU jobs that were just elected or selected, or however you want to characterize it, went to multi-time Bilderberg attendees, as well as the Greek, the Greek uh, parliamentary election, which I was there covering in Athens a month and a half ago. Kyriakos Mitsotakis, who comes from a, a Greek political dynasty and a Bilderberg dynasty, were you asking Ukrainians about the Russian versus Ukrainian question? Was are, the Russian versus Ukrainian question, or are you saying whether they prefer to speak? What, what uh, specify, please? Anyway, yeah. So uh, there might be I might be talking more about Kristalina Georgieva coming up sometime soon, if indeed she becomes the next head of the IMF, and that ties into Bilderberg. I like the interview with Charlie Skelton, also a lot more great content on this channel. Thank you very much. And um, I don't know if I'll be doing anything more with Charlie Skelton before next year's Bilderberg, but probably more, more with him to come in the future. But I really, I really enjoyed that format. I would like to see you work as a journalist, meaning how you find leads, how you follow up, etc. showing basics on. Okay, um, if, you're, if you're truly interested in the ins and outs of it, contact me, Dro drop me a line, email me, DM me, or, or whatever. Uh, some of that I, I put out in the form of Bilderberg blogs, or Bil Bilderberg vlogs, and some other vlogs. Talk about that occasionally, like I remember once doing a vlog in Sarajevo about how I effectively snuck into the Erdogan rally. But to some extent, I'm, I'm not going to put that out publicly. And it's, it's, not, it's not all meant for public consumption because a lot of the, the process involves gaining sources, trust, and um, showing that if, if indeed they, they, uh, that you have some deal with them, that it's not for attribution, or you're not going to disclose where you got the information, that in, indeed you, you don't disclose it. So I mean, there, there are lots of ins and outs to journalism and cultivating sources. Uh, that is understandable. I was saying, what can be shown? Yeah. All right. Well, 
uh, I've got, it seems like there's a lot of interest in the, the Bilderberg blogs coming out. I'll see that they come out. One of them's already edited and ready to go. Uh, which one do they prefer? Are you talking about Russian, Ukrainian? I was addressing that earlier, I, if, if that's the question, which language they, they prefer. Watch a little before you joined in on this broadcast. I was, I was talking about that, although I don't have exact ratios. Um, but yeah, so I can, I can put out a little more about the reporting process. In fact, th that would work out quite well for me because I'm considering switching over to more of a vlog format, or as I like to call, more of a process journalism format, just because of my time and budget constraints. So I, I was doing that to some degree in Africa, I was doing it to some degree a few years back where I would have a bunch of vlogs as opposed to uh, actual on-the-ground reports at events or covering elections and whatnot. So yeah, it's it's easier for me to crank out some impromptu vlog than it is to readily be available to, to full-on cover an event. But yeah, I'll, I'll try to incorporate Why more of that and I'm just going to try to make sure that this channel doesn't die off. So <laughs> that's... I hope that's not too too gloomy of a way to wrap things up, but yeah, I'm I'm inspired by. That will let you get out more of your time and, yeah, indeed, indeed. Well, I mean, whether it's documenting documenting the the journalistic process, or whether it's merely me walking around town in, in some city or any random place or country and telling you what what I'm hearing, what I'm seeing. Yeah, it does, it does make things a little easier given time and budget constraints. So I guess look forward to more of that in the future. And likewise, as I was saying, leave a comment if you do want more of these Sunday streams. I could definitely fall back into the habit. I was falling out of the habit and now I think I could fall back into the habit. So if you like these Sunday streams, I'll try to do them about this time around Sunday evening Eastern European time where I tend to be for much of the year and hopefully I can keep up with that and once again thank you very much for everyone who tuned in for everyone who's who's interested and and watching and now I've got to I gotta hit the road and I've got to catch a train to Lviv or as they say in Russian, Lvov, but I'm not gonna walk around Lviv saying Lvov for the reasons I explained earlier. All right, well, спасибо большое, that would be thank you very much in Russian, and дякую, uh, or that's thank you in Ukrainian, and I'll be back here in a week's time, actually, so maybe I'll be seeing you soon from here once again in the heart of the Ukrainian capital. Thanks a lot, goodbye, and have a good evening or day, wherever you are. Goodbye.